I offer the call to the member for Dawson. Well, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak in the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Amendment uh, Standing Bill 2015. This bill amends the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999 by repealing section 487. Now, section 487 has the effect of extending the definition of an aggrieved person, which is outlined in the Administrative Decisions Judicial Review Act 1977. The original Act outlines the conditions under which someone may apply for a review of an administrative decision. These, deci these conditions specify that, uh, quote, a person who is aggrieved by a decision, end quote, may apply to the Federal Court or the Federal Circuit Court for an order of review. The Act specifies that a person who is aggrieved is someone, again, quote, whose interests are adversely affected by the decision, end quote. And that is the test that applies across a very wide range of administrative decisions. But section 487 of the EPBC Act opens the door for any individual to challenge a decision covered by the Act as long as, quote, at any time in the two years immediately before the decision, failure or conduct, the individual has engaged in a series of activities in Australia or in external territory for protection or conservation of or research into the environment. End quote. And the same, I note, applies to organisations. Well, section 487 specifies that all the terms used in the Administrative Decisions Judicial Review Act have the same meaning in the EPBC Act, except person aggrieved. What the extended meaning has done in practical terms is open a door for the misuse of Australian law. It opens a door for people and organisations who have absolutely nothing to do with the decision being made or the project being considered or the decision not being made for the project being considered. It opens the door for people and organisations whose interests are in no way adversely affected. It opens the door to anyone with an axe to grind, any axe, as long as they took notes on their weekly bushwalk. And that's what it amounts to. It is an open invitation to extreme Greens to use legal warfare or lawfare in pursuit of their own ideology that has nothing to do with the decision or the matter that's being decided upon. And what we've seen in Queensland is an organised campaign by the extreme Green movement uh, to do everything they possibly can to shut down the coal industry. Now, the coal industry is a major driver of the Australian economy. Uh, it still is despite there being a downturn, and it was to coal, certainly not the uh, Rudd Labor government or the uh, member for Lilly, uh, it was coal together with iron ore that got Australia through the global financial crisis. Now, the state of Queensland would be an economic wreck if these activists were suddenly successful in shutting down the coal industry. But the anti-coal movement pays no attention uh, to any impacts that the pursuit of their ideology may have. Some years ago, uh, Mr Acting Speaker, they produced a report, uh, a funding proposal uh, to seek uh, investors uh, from the Extreme Green Network, and that report was called Stopping the Australian Coal Export Boom. They unashamedly named their intentions, uh, which to many thousands of people who rely on the coal industry for jobs, for wealth, for business for survival was nothing short of treason. So these extremists set about implementing this plan uh, almost word by word, letter by letter. They have targeted, amongst other things, uh, the plans by Adani, Adani Australia, to build the biggest coal mine in Australia in the Galilee Basin. I mean, the plans that they have was construction of the Carmichael mine, construction of a railway line linking uh, the Carmichael mine and the Galilee Basin with the port of Abbott Point uh, uh, and um, the expansion of the port at Abbott Point to cater for uh, new ships coming in uh, to export the coal. Now, these extreme Greens have done everything they possibly can to stop that project by frustrating and delaying the approvals process. Uh, I've got to say there's, been a, there's a long litany of, of actions by the Green movement beyond the legal warfare that I want to update the House on. They effectively inserted activists from outside of our region, people who were very well connected and well trained in the uh, 
and professional activism uh, into the Mackay region, uh, into the Sundays region, uh, just as they planned in that document, stopping the Australian coal export boom, inserted these activists into the community to create community dissent, where previously there was none. Again, this is all outlined in the strategy, the strategy of stopping the Australian coal export boom. They have used a, a, a campaign of, of lies and, and misinformation uh, to try and convince the public that things are, are terrible, that we're going to mine the reef and stuff like that. I mean, uh, the language from organisations like GitHub about this, that they, we were going to dump toxic sludge on the reef. There was never any intention to do that. Why would there be? Uh, what, what point is there for that? Um, but these are the kind of lies that we heard. They challenged approvals for the port expansion. Uh, they tried to use lies to convince various segments of the community that, uh, uh, that offshore disposal was going to blow up the reef. Um, uh, the only concern they raised about the Abbott Point expansion was offshore disposal at that point in time. And even uh, a Greens candidate said they would be happy uh, with uh, the port being expanded if it was agriculture that was going out, not coal, which showed the hypocrisy in their arguments about the reef. Um, they advocated a change at that point to onshore disposal. Um, and when the government moved to address concerns out there, uh, which probably weren't based too much on science but were based on uh, a fear that something was going to happen to the reef, so we said we'll put that disposal of dredge spoil onshore. Uh, suddenly there was another reason that the Green Movement was against it. Uh, it was the Cali Valley wetlands, and when the Cali Valley wetlands has been sorted out, now it's just the fact it's coal. They're just coming out and stating it plain and simple, that it's coal. They're still railing against the project, but they're unclear as to the reason why, apart from it's coal. So then they went and challenged the federal government's approval of the Carmichael mine. Now, this is but uh, the latest in the long line of extreme green um, uh, actions to dis dis delay and disrupt this job-creating project. And uh, they used the ornamental stake and the yakka skink as the reason to go about this latest delay and disruption exercise. But it wasn't about the snake, it wasn't about the skink, it wasn't about the environment. It's not even about climate change. Uh, you know, it's about the coal. It's about the coal. The green movement, the extreme green movement, hate the coal, even though that it's got this project has the capacity to create hundreds, if not thousands, of jobs in the, the uh, Queensland, and particularly in regional Queensland and around the Mackay region. Hundreds of millions of Indians will be lifted out of energy poverty. Um, you know, and if the coal doesn't come out of the Galilee Basin, where's it going to come from? They're just going to source it from elsewhere. They're going to source it probably from Indonesia, where there's weaker environmental regulations, where there's lower quality coal, higher ash content, which means higher carbon dioxide emissions when it's burnt. Now, if the Green Movement really cared about carbon dioxide emissions, really cared about the entire planet and environmental regulation, uh, then they would promote this mine ahead of other options, because the other options are going to be worse in terms of environmental outcome. So it is about shutting down the Australian coal industry, and that is the only aim behind these actions, an aim that's purely ideological. And is that what we really want in this country? Is that what the EPBC Act was supposed to be for? Was it supposed to be was it designed to promote ideological activism? Uh, I would say no. And I would say also that we are not willing, we are not willing to sacrifice so much for the sake of letting the extreme Greens play out their ideological games uh, with this legislation. And I want to say to the House, uh, maybe this argument's gone on legally and politically, but let's not forget what's at stake here. The extreme green movement, even if there is a reapproval of this project for the next two years, will continue to disrupt and delay this project in court, uh, and it will quite possibly bring this project to an end. 
I am very worried about that. I am worried for my region, Mr Deputy Speaker. We have workers from central and north Queensland that are desperately looking for jobs, people who have come out of the mining industry. Uh, Adani indicated they wanted to use workers from Mackay and Bowen and regional Queensland. Just the other day I had a long-standing business, 130 years in the Mackay community, contact me and tell me that they were forced to uh, make some workers redundant there because of the downturn in the economy. We have thousands of empty homes throughout the Mackay region. We've got hundreds of empty homes in the Bowen region, and we have this project which could restore some hope and opportunity to the region being held up by this green movement. I mean, there's the opportunity of the railway line construction and the operation of that railway line, which could create more jobs and open up more economic opportunity in the town of Bowen, which is dying the death of a thousand cuts right now. The expansion of Abbott Point, which again would facilitate jobs and investment in Bowen and also the Mackay region. What this is about, really, Mr Deputy Speaker, is about the families in North Queensland, in Mackay, in Bowen and Townsville, the Burdekin, the Whitsundays, that are struggling, struggling because of job insecurity, because of family stress, family breakdown because they can't make ends meet, because these jobs are being held up, and people who are actually killing themselves, Mr Deputy Speaker, killing themselves because they don't see that there's any hope, because the Green movement are in court litigating against this job-creating project, and I say enough is enough. A few North Queenslanders killing themselves in despair doesn't worry the Green movement, but I've got to tell you it worries me. We in North Queensland care. The majority of others around the country should care. The people in this chamber should care. Uh, we care about people. We should care about jobs. Uh, we should care about revenue that uh, this project could bring in to the government to provide schools, hospitals and basic care and, and, and infrastructure in North Queensland so people can go about living a good life. Uh, we should be caring about things that uh, this project should provide to uh, uh, overseas, so getting people out of energy poverty, uh, you know, creating new economic opportunities, creating uh, steel windmills um, for the environment. Uh, you know, well, uh, it's going to create the windmills that the Greens love. Uh, that uh, the down the rabbit hole fairy land and the lunatic fringe that puts up the uh, idea as their utopia, their pie in the sky, they want to ram down our throats. None of that is possible without coal and without coal miners. Trying to shut down the coal fired power generation before viable alternatives are in place is not putting the cart before the horse, it's shooting the horse and believing that it's somehow going to force innovation. Well, the motor car wasn't invented because. We went out and shot the horses. A return to cave dwelling under the mistaken belief that we'll somehow magically drive the mythical green technology, that's just lunacy. Without the materials that coal provides, and without the electricity that coal provides, and without the funding that coal and a functioning economy provides, none of the fairy land that the Greens go on about will ever be possible. An unemployed scientist eating grass and weaving hemp baskets in Nimbin is not going to invent any green technology. I've got to say to the Labor Party in particular, uh, I know you guys uh, side with the Greens more often than not these days, and it's very sad. But I have, I have workers in North Queensland, in Central Queensland, people who have voted Labor all of their lives that are hoping that you guys will get on board and actually support the government on this, because we want to see this project go ahead. And I've got to tell you that if you decide, if the Labor Party decides to vote this legislation down, then it needs to come up to the Mackay region and tell people, you tell people, you come, you come, and you tell people why you voted this down and why you have delayed this project, why you want the Greens to keep on taking it to court, why you want these opportunities destroyed, why you want these jobs destroyed, why you have sacrificed the workers of North Queensland and Central Queensland for some cheap green inner city votes. That's not the Labor Party way. Uh, you should be up there supporting it. You should be up there trying to get this project done. That's what the government's trying to do. That's what the Liberal National Coalition's trying to do. We are on the side, well and truly, of the mine workers of Central and North Queensland. It is such, such a shame that the Labor Party has hung them out to dry. 
I thank the member for Dorset. Question is Bill.